for those who do not know the netflix movie all quiet on the western front released in 2022 is actually the third film adaptation of a novel named all quiet on the western front by eric maria remark published in 1928 and 1929 so given the sort of movie addict i am as usual <laughs> Once I came to know that there are previous movies also made on that novel I immediately watched those movies as well I am a completionist and an ardent movie addict you know so it was natural for me to watch all of them <laughs> Before I talk about the latest 2022 film adaptation I would discuss the earlier two film adaptations as well which were released in 1930 and 1979 so let's get on with it shall we first of all the first film adaptation of the novel the movie all quiet on the western front released in 1930 this 1930 adaptation is of course a black and white movie given the technological limitations of the time the movie lacks in so many aspects like the audio is not clear at all which was a bit annoying for me i had the volume of my home theater almost at its highest level to fully understand what is going on and what the characters are saying soldiers are shown as dying from the gunshot yet there is no wound on them at all like they are just falling on the ground and pretending that they have died from the gunshot it was quite funny <laughs> the movie is full of explosions and they have shown the live explosions quite well and that is something which i have to acknowledge given the time when the movie was made and the technology available to them at the time but god the movie is full of explosion sounds like around 50 explosions they must have shown in the movie some of those were shown as live explosions while the others as background ones so all the time this sound does 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 is happening in the movie and after a while one gets kind of fed up from all those continuous explosion sounds <laughs> really the 1930 adaptation is not a bad movie It's a 1930 movie and given the technology available at that time I say it's quite a decent movie Also whenever the 1930 movie tried to show emotions it really came through with flying colors I would say The emotional scenes overall are quite nicely done in the movie And now the second film adaptation named All Quiet on the Western Front released in 1979 this 1979 adaptation is a joint british slash american production the movie was shot in czechoslovakia and actually made specifically for the television but make no mistake about it it's a very good movie it excels in the technical areas where the 1930 adaptation lacked such as We now have a full-fledged colored movie. The audio is very clear now and is perfectly audible. The soldiers getting shot from a gun ha- now have wounds on them. Albeit some of the soldiers dying in the movie, especially in the beginning, did not have gunshot wounds and they were simply falling down pretending to have been shot from the gun, which really annoyed me. and i said god it's a movie made in 1979 i mean 49 years after the original adaptation and still the soldiers getting shot do not have wounds on them <laughs> it is what it is having said that however the 1979 adaptation is better than 1930 version in just about every way the characters are all well defined and better laid out than the original movie and also the acting done by the actors involved is a lot better here 
Script wise, the 1979 movie is almost identical to the 1931. Perhaps one or two changes have been made in the script of this 1979 version if you compare it with the 1930 movie script. But overall, the script is almost the same in both of these movies. When the 1979 movie ended, a thought just came into my mind and that is Man, it's a TV movie made in 1979, yet it is one of the best war movies that I have ever seen in my whole life. This movie now stands alongside Saving Private Ryan, The Pianist and Schindler's List as one of my favorite war movies of all time. It deserves this credit, absolutely. A well-made war movie that anyone should see at least once in his life. And now the third film adaptation All Quiet on the Western Front released in 2022. This movie is somewhat a Netflix original movie released in October 2022. You see I have used the word somewhat here and the reason is that this movie was showcased in Toronto International Film Festival and also had a limited theatrical release in the United States almost a month prior to its release on the Netflix platform. From the outset, one thing clearly differentiates this 2022 movie from the previous two adaptations of 1930 and 1979 and that is you see, the novel was originally in German language, written by a German soldier and this 2022 movie is a German movie with German actors speaking German dialogue and that is exactly the reason why this 2022 movie feels the most authentic out of all three adaptations. One thing to be noted here that this 2022 movie was shot in Czech Republic, the city Prague. Talking about the quality of this movie, I will simply say one thing here. All Quiet on the Western Front of 2022 is a way, way better war movie than 1917 ever was. And trust me, that's a big compliment. 1917 which was also based on World War I, was a masterpiece for technical reasons, like long sequences were shot in that movie, the movie was shown like a, like a single shot movie, albeit there were clear 6 to 7 interruptions, the movie was shot without any artificial slash studio light, and instead they used natural environmental lights and flares for the shoot, but having said that, 1917 to me simply pales in comparison to the 2022 adaptation of All Quiet on the Western Front novel. And the reason is simple. The story of All Quiet on the Western Front is just way, way superior than 1917. Now, if I compare the 2022 adaptation with 1930 and 1979 movies, I will say this. The 1930 and 1979 movies excel in the story department and character formulation, especially the 1979 movie has a great character driven type of vibe, while the 2022 movie excels in two things. Number one. The authenticity factor because of the fact that the movie is in German language which suits the original source material that is the German novel and number two on technical grounds. The movie is of course made with modern day camera and other equipment. The color grading is spot on. The movie is just awesome to look at. The sound design is very nice. The, the sounds of gunfire and explosions etc. They all feel really nice. The facial makeup done on the characters and especially the main character 
really deserves a strong mention here. I say good job done by their makeup artists. They surely do know their art. If you have watched this movie, you would understand what I'm talking about when I say that the facial makeup is just masterfully done in this movie. Of course, the cinematography in 2022 adaptation is just brilliant. Some of the camera angles used here are nothing short of fantastic. You know the cinematographer of this movie is actually a British guy named James Friend and he has won an Oscar for his cinematography effort in All Quiet on the Western Front. This movie steals the Oscar from a movie named Bardo False Chronicles of a Handful of Truths. You know the cinematography done by Dario Shkunji in Bardo was simply magnificent. But I can understand why the best cinematography award went to All Quiet on the Western Front. All Quiet on the Western Front is of course a way bigger movie than Bardo and hence it, it understandably got the attention from critics from around the world which is something Bardo couldn't have managed to achieve. It is as simple as that. Talk about Oscar. This movie also got an Oscar for Best Original Score or Background Music. Now, here I strongly object. To me, the background music or the score in All Quiet on the Western Front just doesn't suit the tone of the movie at all. And to be honest, that music score is kind of weird, really. Also, the score includes a drum roll in certain sequences. That drum roll also felt kind of out of place, really. But you know, at the end of the day, it got an Oscar for this very complaint which I have with it. Unbelievable. <laughs> now let us talk about one particular aspect of this movie which I feel is very important and that is the script and how true to the novel this 2022 movie script is when we compare it with the 1930 and 1979 movies. The 2022 adaptation omits or discards the following aspects of the novel which were included in the 1930 and 1979 adaptations. I will just vaguely mention those omitted aspects of the novel in order to not spoil anything for you guys and these are number one the thing about postman and how the cadets treat him in the end when they were about to pass out their training number two one of the soldier friends donating his boots to a fellow soldier you know that particular aspect of the novel is really really heart touching let's just leave at that number three the main character whose name is paul bomber getting injured and making a trip back home these three things were shown in 1930 and 1979 movies but they are for some reason discarded in the 2022 movie and what the 2022 movie includes, which the 1930 and 1979 movies did not, that is the ceasefire meetings held between German and Allied forces delegations. That whole aspect the 2022 movie deals with rather extensively, but it has been omitted in the 1930 and 1979 movies. Talk about the story aspects of 2022 adaptation. I say the way the 2022 movie ends. Or should I say the way they have ended the main character's story, the Paul Bomber story, is way, way more heart touching than the 1930 and 1979 movies. Tell you what, the ending of 2022 movie is one sad ending and I felt for the main character when the movie ended. Oh, 
I say the 2022 movie ends in a way way more brilliant fashion than the 1930 and 1979 movies. It really does. While all things considered, the director of this movie must also be appreciated for his work. The guy is Edward Berger, who is a German slash Austrian slash Swiss filmmaker. He has directed, co-written and co-produced this movie. It's his love project, of course, and love he did give to it. What a fantastic modern day war movie he has made in the form of All Quiet on the Western Front. And he also got an Oscar for it, that is the Oscar for Best International Feature Film. And finally, All Quiet on the Western Front of 2022 deservingly gets a spot in my list of greatest war movies of all time alongside the likes of Saving Private Ryan, The Pianist and Schindler's List. So this was my rather extensive review of the film adaptations done for the German novel All Quiet on the Western Front. I say all three movie adaptations are wonderful and definitely worth a watch by anyone. All three movies are highly recommended.